what I would want him to make sure, this would be a number, a, a, a big priority. What gets in everybody's way of performance is when the outcome of a shot or the sh round you shoot has some implication on who you think you are as a person oh, yeah. or the value of how much you've practiced. Yeah. So the very first and thing you have to watch is make sure that somebody doesn't get their identity wrapped up in whether they hit it good, bad, or indifferent. Yeah. Because if your identity gets involved, so you hit a shot, you're a good person, you miss it, you're a bad person, that's too much pressure. No, it's just a shot. Certainly the thing I can, I can see your guy saying to you seven months into it, uh, that we, we saw on the Haney Project. We saw this exact thing yeah. happen on the Haney Project with Ray Romano. He hits a shot and he said, as much practice as I've been putting into this, what I've been putting into this, actually it was the other way. Hank said it to him. As much as we've been putting into this for this long, for you to hit a shot like that is outrageous. That's crazy, that shot you hit just there. So now we're not calling out Hank or anything, but that's a situation I could see seven months into your process, your guy saying to himself, saying like, I don't believe I'm still hitting snap hooks like that seven months into it. Nobody's practiced more than me for the last seven months. This is out, this is horrible. Yeah. Right there, go right. home. Right. You're done. No, done for the day. No, no, you're done for your career. Oh, if that's your if attitude. If that's your attitude, right. you, you will never ever reach your potential in this game. No. When your identity comes becomes wrapped up in the shot you hit, or your belief in your talent level is wrapped up into how well you play or don't play yeah. and how what's going to happen tomorrow, you're done. The superstars, they can handle, when they get up and they go through their process, they're more concerned about going through the process, having a clear picture and duplicating emotion. They can handle the outcome. Worst case scenario, I top it or I hit it out of bounds. Okay, no big deal. I'll just hit another one. Yeah, I think some of the worst shots ever hit by a person on TV didn't haven't actually come from Charles Barkley and some of these amateurs Tiger Woods during his darkest days hit some of the worst shots I've ever seen televised oh yeah so at the hero challenge in Florida when they was on that Bermuda he hit a couple of chips two inches uh, one that went actually two inches and then backwards he hit uh, some very top drives but it never affected him to the point where you know, you never, uh, you did see, you know, it was probably connected to some kind of physical problem. But then, you know, he, he stuck with it and, and has won the tour championship and then the majors. How is Tiger's attitude different? Like, how would a certain player that is doomed take those top shots, those chub shots in front of millions of people? Well, first, that Tiger didn't take it that way. Well, first of all, yeah, are they upset? Are they disappointed? Yes, yeah, sure they are. But they learn from it and then it challenges them to get better at it. It, it, it doesn't deflate their it time they've spent. His own view of himself. No, it doesn't deflate that. Now we all have fragile egos, and 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 when when the sports psychologists say, well, just believe in yourself. Well, if you've chunked it three times in a row, something's wrong with your t belief is not going to fix it. Yeah, who are you going to believe? You're okay. believing right, yourself right. So, or what's actually happening? So belief is connected to outcome to some degree. Where if you think, okay, I, there's a good chance I'm going to do this. All right, then you let yourself go. If it doesn't happen you're okay, what did I do wrong? And you fix it and you go on. So the key to being good is to be able to accept the worst possible scenario outcome and be okay with it and use it as a learning device. That's what superstars in business do. They're not afraid to go bankrupt or lose a deal. You know, they, they're okay, they'll recover. The ones who are so afraid to lose the deal never really get that good. No. Taking that type of pressure off. I've spent yeah. so much time with Phil Blackmar. Phil is one of the most intelligent people I've ever been around relative to the whole mental side of golf. Mr. Big. Mr. Yeah. Mr. Big, he, know, he understand. This guy is so mentally tough. He had, you know, if he sees this, he was pitiful ball striking. I mean, relatively speaking, but he had a mind that he could allow himself to hit shots that a 20 handicapper wouldn't hit and go to the next one and hit it right next to the hole and win and survive on tour. Well, I used to play many tours and whatnot, even on tour to some degree, I used to look up and down the range at all the beautiful swings, the guys hitting it really good and great putting strokes and wedge games and everything else. And I, I kept wondering why I kept beating them, guys like you. <laughs> There's not, no business beating guys like you, but I was, I was very focused on trying to get the ball in the hole in the least number of strokes, however I had to do that. 
and I was willing to do anything that it took to do that. Part one of my, part of that is playing to your strengths, and one of my strengths was in it long ways. Yeah. So it didn't. I didn't care you didn't about watch, you. You didn't watch me. No, I didn't care about you. <laughs> I was worried about me. So the reason I didn't shake your hand was, let me ask you this first: Did I get in your way at any time in those two days? Did no. Walk, did I ever walk while you were in? No. Did I ever stand in your way while you were putting? No. So I didn't bother you. No. Okay. So do you you have a complaint? <laughs> I'm not. I'm not there. Is your social friend and butterfly to pat you on the back and let's have a good time? I'm there for me, and for me only. Now afterwards, we can go have lunch. We can go to a movie. We can go whatever. But during the course of the round, my sole purpose is trying to shoot a scores, and I am. I am totally engulfed in that, as much as I can. Whatever I got to do, and so, I'm like this, trying to play to my strengths, away from my weaknesses. And I got pretty good at that. And, and is it fair? Yeah, it's totally fair. Because it's all about, the only thing that matters is the number on the board at the end of the day. And so learning from him and a lot of these other guys that are players and people outside of golf. I've spent, I've learned a lot more from people outside of golf in the last 35 years than in golf. Yeah. Because they, they are not affected by what somebody says golf should be. They either know neurologically what's going on, learning processes, physiologically, and so they don't have any preconceived notions. Yeah. So you just go, how does this work? And they go, it works like this. Yeah. And you go, oh my God. Tee up a ball for me, Mike. And because I've seen Phil do this, I want you to, and it kind of comes to the, to the subject of self-talk. So kind of put a microphone inside of what you think Phil's self-talk would be before like an important drive. Let's talk about 18 at Pebble Beach. Okay, where it came Okay, from. well, I, yeah. Yeah. all right, so the first thing you, you're back here, you, you, you got to figure out, okay, it's 18 at Pebble Beach, I got water down the left, my life's on the line, what shot do I feel the most comfortable with? Now, there isn't a right or wrong shot here. There's that little tree. There's the tree out there, okay, but let's say the tree is over this red flag, okay. So, but you got to stand there and you got to go, okay, do I feel like hitting it down the water and cutting it? Do I feel like hitting a draw? I mean, which, what shot, what shot do I feel like I can pull off? Well, I'm going to give you an, an additional thing where you know in your mind, whether you've been scoreboard watching or maybe somebody accidentally yeah. said it, you know that birdie's going to win it for you. Okay. okay. Well, we still got to get it in the fairway. Right, right. Because odds are you're not going to hit it on the green in two. I mean, you might, but you, you're going to make birdie with your west. So the first thing here, you got to get the first shot. You're not going to make birdie if you hit it in the water or out of bounds. And you're not going to hit it on the green in one anyway. So, exactly. Right. Yeah. So you're standing here going, okay, so what shot? What's the wind doing? What do I feel comfortable with? And once once you find a shot that you've comp that you see that you're comfortable with, then you got to make a couple of practice swings to feel what you're gonna what what does the shot feel? You've hit it a million times. I mean, I've hit a little cut a million times. So what does it feel like? So you make a couple of practice swings until you go. You feel how you move. You feel what the face is doing through the ball, and you go there. Now I got it. I just felt what I wanted to do. All right, now at this point, now I walk up here, and now I aim the club, and I can tell you that his thought process right now is doing nothing but focusing on the motion that he created back there. So he's duplicating the motion that he felt back there. And that's like two yards left of that tree. And I just, I piped it. And, and you're going to have a real great chance of getting it on too. Okay, so when you ask what's the thought process over the ball, the thought process is being very mentally engaged in duplicating the feel, but having your body be relaxed enough where it can just go ahead and duplicate what you felt. Yep. So the key is to be mentally engaged, but physically relaxed. So you're becoming like that childlike imitator. That's exactly what yep. you are. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're over the ball and you're <laughs> sitting here going, okay, now make sure you take it back straight and okay, do this with your hand, you're dead. You, yeah. you, 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 it, it's a motion. See, the, the swing is a motion. You already have the picture, you've got the feel, you've programmed it. That's where golf is better than tennis and baseball because you can stand back here and program in, okay, what do I want to do? What do I feel comfortable? Okay, this is the shot I'm going to hit. What am I doing? What's the face doing? How am I moving? Okay, and then as soon as you go, okay, I got it, now you just walk up here and allow yourself to just duplicate what you just did. And you rank your trust comes in. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And you rank yourself on how well you allowed yourself to duplicate the process, not where the ball goes. Right. 
And when you get into when you get into ranking yourself on your ability to allow yourself to duplicate the field, not where it went, that's when you start getting to where you can play. Thanks for watching everybody. This is the first video of over three hours worth of content that I shot with Mike at Superstition Mountain. Thanks to Mike for all the time. So click the subscribe button. You're gonna see a lot of awesome videos that I shot with Mike Malasco talking about how to develop your game, the role of the right arm in the swing, the Malaska move, all kinds of stuff is coming out. So really excited for that. And a lot of it, you'll have to click the subscribe button so thanks for doing that and see you next time. This feel right here with this, that's critical for anybody to be any good because that's how you're gonna compress the ball.